India in 2021, headed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, got its first chance to head UNSC Maritime Security Meet. Prime Minister Modi enunciated certain aspects associated with Maritime Security Meet. And of course, the prime concern of India in this case is going to be the security of Indian Ocean and securing Indian Ocean. Now, the entire of this title is going to be hinging around what constitutes India's ocean security, what constitutes maritime security, what are strategic security considerations, economic security considerations, ecological security considerations, and so on. And what are the threats that are being posed to the security of Indian Ocean, and how is it that these threats can be dealt with? With this is going to be a common topic for us in this case here. Now, the UN Security Council on Enhancing Maritime Security was, of course, chaired by Prime Minister Modi on August 9, 2021, and it reflects India's international evolution as a maritime country. Now, why is it that we go on to talk about India's international evolution as a maritime country? Is because the perception that is in front of the world is that eh, India has not been a seafaring country, but that is a narrative that colonial countries have built up. That is, Britain has particularly built up, Germany at one point of a time built up. Eh? And why is it that they, they built up this narrative? Of course, that was to downgrade India, and it is for all of these reasons that Indian history needs to be rewritten of sorts. Eh? It is for all of these reasons eh, that we understand eh, that India had been the greatest eh, naval power ever imagined by the world. That was during the Chola period. India has been the greatest country in this case. Eh, and eh, of course, eh, India had had a lot of kingdoms like eh, the largest kingdom that was existing during the medieval period. And it was not Mughal. It was Vijayanagar that the grandeur of Vijayanagar was seen to be believed. And of course, it is these aspects which are not in the front of international community. And that is why they go on to talk about India's international evolution as a maritime country. Now, talking of it, we are concerned of the objective. So, international maritime cooperation came to be one of the topics. And the objective of the debate at that point of a time or at this point of a time eh, had been eh, very different. It has been eh, international maritime cooperation. That has been the topic, international maritime cooperation, so as to respond holistically to the natural and man-made threats, both of them natural as well as man-made threats to maritime security. So a cooperation can be imagined eh, only when eh, the objective is very, very clear. That means all of these countries of the world are going to bring themselves together and eh, they respond eh, to any type of a threat, any type of a problem. And that not in an isolated manner, not in silos, but is going to be in terms of natural and man-made threats in this case. Eh. So natural threat can go on to be something like cyclones, tropical cyclones, eh, it can go into tsunami and a man-made threats eh, in this case eh, can go into be piracy it can be uh, illegal mining of it eh. it can be maybe a clandestine uh, nuclear eh, detonation also any of these things eh, human beings are capable of doing much more damage eh, and in variety of eh, ways as well in this case eh. now india is well placed in this case eh. why is it that india should be concerned of a maritime security is eh, because of a eh, a variety of uh, reasons uh, and one of the most important reasons in this case uh, is going to be that uh, it's maritime interest in this case is because of uh, the fact that 75% uh, of the world's maritime trade is going to be doing to, be to Indian Ocean and 50% of the daily global oil consumption also passes through Indian Ocean. And India is at the head of a Indian Ocean. Being at the head of Indian Ocean, India has a lot of a advantages. And because India has a lot of advantages, consequently, India also goes on to be supporting some amount of a responsibility towards it as well. 
Now, to this effect, uh, Prime Minister Modi did say that the oceans is our common heritage which is facing uh, many challenges. This was one of the statements uh, that he, he, went, he went on to make. Uh, and it, indeed, there are going to be challenges. And if you can go on to talk about uh, some of these type of challenges, uh, you will go on to observe that, uh, that is all of those countries, uh, all of these countries going to be known for something different. Manwar, for Sitwe port, uh, export for weapons. Uh, Malaysia, joint patrol, air force training as well. Singapore can be used for the purpose of a joint exercise as well. Pick up any one of them. That is, uh, Iran is uh, going to be significant because we have been constructing Chahabar, although it has been in limbo of sorts. Eh? UA has been holding cooperation in India's oil reserves. Eh? Oman has been, uh, of course, it has a permission for Indian Navy to be part of it. Eh? Seychelles is, uh, and all of these countries, Seychelles is going to be based on the assumption that uh, of course, it is pending. Eh? Mauritius is a naval communication facility that is being constructed. Madagascar, again, naval communication facility. Diego Garcia is going to be one of those bases. Eh? Maldives is petro provision of petrol engines. Eh? So, different places in the eh, Indian Ocean, eh? India is seeking a eh, variety of different type of eh, corporations in this case. Eh? The need for such type of eh, uh, maritime cooperation in Indian Ocean is eh, essentially guided by many factors and one of the most important factors one can imagine in this case is going to be associated with a disregard shown by China. This is going to be the most important threat. So China completely disregards maritime laws, maritime rules, maritime protocols and in this case the rule of law has not been established in this case. It has been unprecedented. That means it has been being broken most often, most often, most often. The nine dash lines, that is one that is going to be claimed by in the South China Sea, is uh, something that is uh, a tantamount to such type of a breakage of uh, and wreckage of the rule of uh, law in this case. Uh, of course, China has been using a lot of force in this case. Uh, that again goes to necessitate uh, India's concern with respect to maritime security. And uh, of course, uh, it has added fuel to the fire that is, uh, International Court of uh, Justice has rejected arbitration's judgment in this case. Uh, but then, since uh, uh, South China Sea has undergone a sea change because of a militarization of the whole of the region, uh, Consequently, one can understand eh, the growing concern with respect to whole of Indian Ocean. And not only ocean, that is eh, anything that is going to be connected to Indian Ocean. That is eh, the choke points as well, the openings as well, all of them. Now to this effect, the United Nations has a law. That is eh, what we are going to call it eh, by the name of eh, UNCLOS, United Nations Convention on Law of eh, See, it's the name that is going to be given to it. United Nations Convention on Law of Sea that is called as UNCLOS. UNCLOS is essentially a rule-based maritime order embodied United Nations Convention on the Law of Sea and it was to benefit, it is a further purpose that has benefited all the countries that are under so-called serious threat. Of course, eh, it was one of those type of laws eh, in which all the countries were brought together, were to be brought together, but they have not been brought together so far in this case. Eh. That has been eh, the case here. Now, that is always going to be a problem. Now, despite UNCLOS, despite UNCLOS, there are still uh, issues associated with them. Eh, our oceans eh? in the South China Sea and other places as well as you can go to find it. Eh? The issues are many. For example, there are dangerous encounters. Eh? The South China Sea it is even more dangerous encounters in the sense that is eh, the Chinese keep on encountering sometimes Americans, sometimes Indians, sometimes Taiwanese, sometimes Philippines. Eh? And that is dangerous eh? largely because eh, that can anytime turn into a full fledged, full blown war also. Then there are a lot of provocative actions as well in this case. And when we are going to be talking about provocative actions, we are essentially talking about some of these actions which are not at all required. They are a means and measures to provocate some of these countries to do something nefarious in this case. And 
how many times say is it that a country can go to hold itself in this case here yeah, it's like uh, insulting a country quite often and uh, then expecting that these countries will not going to work at all then there are unlawful maritime claims in this case uh, that is a uh, one of those type of claims uh, that we are talking about that is a uh, 9-9 that is an unlawful maritime claim and that is indeed one of those type of claims uh, which happens to present some type of a problem in this case uh, so we require to think about a maritime security and this is what exactly has been talked about it the most important components of maritime security happen to be associated with sea routes we are talking about these sea routes and which are being used for the purpose of piracy as well as for terrorism and the countries that are going to be using it of course ethiopia somalia are going to be one of them somalia in particular but even more dangerous trend is that they are being aided by other countries to do it more and more and they are uh, guided by it uh, and they are also encouraged by other countries uh, to be doing it uh, on a fre frequent basis as well. The strategic security consideration in this case has to be that the oceans has to be prevented uh, that it, by an absolute control, absolute control of anyone anyone that means we are talking about any country concern not only india but everywhere of course in indian ocean eh, we require to prevent an absolute control of the ocean by the chinese eh. and of course we are going to be talking about choke points eh. now by choke points eh, we mean eh, there are some of these points eh, through which eh, some claims can going to be made this is going to be one of these choke points that is going to be malacca strait then there is going to be another one that you can go to find it uh, here. And that's the place. This is going to be another of this place that is going to be a choke point. That's another one that is Hormuz Strait. Babel Mandab Strait is going to be another one in this case. Uh, then uh, Red Sea is going to be another part of it. Uh, these are choke points uh, in uh, one of these portions. Uh, and uh, the most important of these choke point here is going to be Malacca Strait. Uh, so that is going to be a part of it that is going to be a component of it second is a maintain a strategic security that is a going to be done through constant surveillance and surveillance that means a surveillance of anyone concerned or a consortium of countries that can go on to have this type of a surveillance to prevent some of these type of unlawful activities third is to prevent a stealth survey and for example, one of these stealth surveys, that means a stealth survey is something like a, a camouflage survey. That means a country sneaks in, tries to do some type of a survey with certain type of a design. And of course, uh, some associated technologies of a stealth survey and its uses as well. For example, one can go to come in and can go to uh, do the entire survey of uh, the Mariana Trench. Now, without the global community knowing it, that that is a survey that is being done that is always always going to be dangerous in this case here dangerous to the world community that has been one component of a strategic security other component the fourth component is make it unclos compatible unclos compatibility is significant and why is it that we're going to be saying it so unclos incompatibility because there are good number of countries that have not signed United Nations Convention on Law of Sea. And unless they happen to sign it, eh, there is no way that they will going to comply with it. Eh. So that without it, there will be no way that it can go to have some entire degree of an strategic independence as well. And we are going to be talking about that Indian Ocean requires to be independent eh, to such an extent eh, that eh, it shouldn't go to become a zone of conflict at all. Then freedom of navigation. We are talking about this part, freedom of navigation, unimpeded commerce and peaceful settlement of disputes. Because so much amount of a trade passes through it, then every country must go on to communicate. Every country must go on to navigate it easily. And unless it goes on to navigate it easily, there will be always some disputes. And then if even if it, that there are disputes, there must be a peaceful settlement rather than through subjugation. One of the objectives to prevent maritime crime is uh, preserve marine uh, ecology. That is going to be one of them. Why? Because uh, it's like a uh, Chinese ship going to Maldives, to going to the atolls of Maldives, destroying some of these atolls, destroying some of the coral reefs, uh, and the country is left to fend itself. Uh, 
without any reason, without any type of a base. And if it is not able to fend itself, it goes on to pay a price through its destructive ecology. Then protect against uh, disasters. That is going to be important. And when we are going to be talking about protecting against disaster, this basically goes on to imply, it basically goes on to com combine and comprise uh, that uh, we are talking about uh, we are talking about how is it that we can go to use uh, disasters uh, for the purpose of bringing the countries together as well and help other countries. You will realize uh, that India had been in a position to help uh, some countries like the Mozambique and other places as well. And of course, to help it, uh, help it make a prosperous blue economy. That means a country and a region that is going to be known for its uh, maritime uh, resource utilization and the technologies associated with this maritime resource utilization. So that is going to be strategic security. Economic security is going to be associated with a lot of aspects. For example, one of them is going to be resource exploration. That is, is it that a country like India will be able to explore its resources peacefully? That is one. Or is it that it goes on to be as per in accordance of law of uh, International Seabed Authority, ISA. The second is going to be countering threats of the Chinese. There will be going to be a good number of Chinese in this place and they are making their presence felt in a lot of places in a variety of ways. And what they can going to do is that they can going to mine in your backyard and still you cannot go to know that. We have to store SLOC, that is a C lens of communication that will go on to be a component of it and a part of it in this case. Now, while trying to, to do it so, you can understand the whole part of it. That is, the governance of the oceans go on to present an issue because this goes on to regulate the Earth's climate. That is why the ocean governance is significant. It regulates the Earth's climate that is going to be one part eh? then uh, it of, co of course provides jobs eh? that is uh, of course by fisheries aquaculture and eh, so on this governance is significant because it is a source of food eh? uh, there is no doubt on that part eh? and then you have it is going to be used for the purpose the medium of transportation it produces 50 percent of the earth's eh? oxygen without it there will be no way that we can go to sustain life eh? and life-saving medicines also and when we are going to be talking about life-saving medicines eh, we are talking about eh, something that is known to us right now there will be a lot of things that will be not known to us and still it will be able to provide it to us eh. as a part of economic security one of these components is going to be preventing commercial threats eh. and when we are talking about preventing commercial threats eh, then eh, of course we are talking about how is it that eh, piracy of the coast is, that is taking place it's out of Somalia since 2007 can be prevented or can be managed. Now, in trying to do so, in trying to, uh, of course, we have a security concern with respect to ecology, with respect to economy, with respect to strategy and uh, the, that is, uh, how is it that we can go to prevent some of these commercial threats in this case? Uh, one of them is preventing piracy and India has been trying to monitor and participate in a UNSC mandated 60 country contact group in order to prevent this type of a piracy and that is very very significant and for you to know that is a, this is the complete zone that is going to be known for a piracy and it is a, a real it's a real a place of an UG in the sense that is a, it's a real risky place from that angle. The other is securing sea lines of communication. Now, in trying to secure sea lines of communication, eh, we have to first ensure access to SLOC by the different states. Eh. Every state should be in a position to do it so. Then uh, resolving differences through peaceful means. Eh. If it is that there is any type of a conflict that takes place, eh, then of course it has to, that is the only way that we can go to restore it. Eh. SLOC connect that is sea lines of communication connects that is developing it and all of those that you're going to see it in the background here these are the sea line of communication connect and that is what exactly requires to be stored other is a red sea to the indian ocean through the babel and mandab district because that is going to be one of the greatest regions which transports oil and oil is going to be the lifeline for most of the countries 
Then from Persian Gulf to the Indian Ocean through the Strait of Hormuz, that is going to be another sea line of communication, which is again going to be known for oil. And then a variety of type of trades that are going to take from the Strait of Malacca through the Strait of Malacca. Now these are some of these lines of communication that requires to be secured. Talking about it, we have to take into account encroachment of the other issue is encroachment of the EEZ domains and EEZ that is exclusive economic domains. We have a center in India and that is going to be international fusion center that is working in Gurugram. Of course it has been established in 2018 and that talks about technology cooperation, environmental security, that is how exactly if there is a type of environmental disaster then countries can go to join together in this case. Establishment of a tsunami warning system here. Of course if there is a possibility of some of these countries dumping their load then how to prevent such type of dumping and all in all we are going to be talking about that no country because it is going to be dominated by big countries, powerful countries, influential countries. None of these littoral states should going to lose their identity or the sense of identity in this case. Continuing with its international cooperation part, that is sustaining international cooperation, we require to understand a good number of components other than opening only Gurugram. That is, India will continue its engagement with other countries. That is one part of it. Then it must go to sustain international cooperation for two things. Effective legal policy framework, evolving a policy framework that will go to legalize a good number of things, formalize a lot of things, which all the countries must go on to follow. And a new challenge is to peace and security that is coming up that must be mitigated. Then an open debate focused on uh, the application of 1982 uh, Convention Law of Sea UNCLOS eh, so that eh, other countries must go on to become a signatory to it. Eh. And of course, it includes uh, non-state actors eh, such as eh, terrorists, pirates eh, and criminal gangs eh, to engage eh, for the purpose of eh, trying to control drug trafficking eh, and eh, other problems associated with it. Eh. To have more such discussions and analysis, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications on our upcoming videos.